Well, I never thought to check the machine notebook before. Scorcher, Frostclaw. Oh. Okay. There's something at the end for us. That's exciting. Demonic machine and control tower. Okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> sure. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Horizon Zero Dawn. Probably going to be the last episode in Frozen Wilds from what I'm gathering. Could be wrong, but it's kind of seeming that way. So, let's go forward and see if we can finish this today. I highly suspect that we will. Gotta cross a literal lake of lava to get there, but okay. How are we going to get there? I don't know. Maybe I have to jump over this. Okay. Not a lake of lava right here, uh -oh. which is great. Whatever Cyan did, I don't think Hephaestus is happy about it. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know what it did. Also, was that the uh, wiggle blast of the control towers? Is there something back there? No? Okay. That's cool. Please don't let the lava suddenly rise up. Would appreciate it. The lava doesn't need to start a revolution. Okie dokie, Dan. Of course we're going to override it. That's the most fun. Don't see any machines. Please let there not be any. I'm glad they give us the choice. What you got there? You want to come say hi? Oh, oh, hey! He found a new machine. The new unit that Cyan warned us about. This won't be easy. Yeah, I don't say. If I can just... Whoa, whoa, holy cow! Whoa, no, 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 no! This is more like a magma claw. Don't you? No, no. Okay, you're fast. I can appreciate that. Doesn't mean I hate you any less, though. Uh-huh. Whoop! Okay. Oh, it burns. Oh, it burns. Oh, it burns. Don't quote me out of context on that, either. Yes, yes, yes. You're very scary. Very scary. Actually, yes. I, I mean, I was never... ...being sarcastic about that at all. Okay, don't. Oh, I never thought of that before. I should probably try that more often. Should also consider staying away from it when it's trying to attack me while waiting for my shields to come back. That also seems like a fantastic idea. Hey, you've got friends. Hey, you can still attack me. That's lovely. Okay, but seriously, I need you to leave my allies alone because their existence helps me to stay alive. Hey, Araya, it, it's, it's practically dead. I mean, if you want to tank the hit from a small arrow, I guess that's probably the smartest thing you could do. I see what you're doing over there. Knock it off. There we go. Fantastical. Oh, you tried. Oh, you actually succeeded a lot. Okay, then what? <laughs> Nope. Where, why, why were you not running forward? There's not anything to get stuck in your way there. Woo, he's venting. Gee. Alrighty then. I mean, the, the sticky bombs, after they explode, they're definitely not going to kill it, so I might as well get that delayed damage in early, as long as it's going to do extra. Whoa, okay. Yes, I'm right under you.
Did I get that shot off? Mm. Okay, don't, 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 actually. Maybe if I can do enough of these, I can make it flinch. Hey, buddy, I'm right over here. Come get me. Did that hurt? I sure hope so. Okay, it set them all off and didn't flinch on the way. Lovely. Hard point it is. I keep forgetting I have those. The entire reason I brought this bow anywhere in the first place. I mean, the fire arrows are awesome, don't get me wrong, but. Oh yeah, frost. Uh, do I have anything that can do that? What's my bottom weapon? Nope. Not gonna be able to do that. Actually, actually, hold on, hold on. I hate to pause in the middle of a battle like this, but um, this will be more useful right now, I feel. Where'd it go? It's gonna be up there. Come on. Darn it. Oh, come on. Is there someone else here attacking me, or is it just doing these distance attacks? Or is the volcano beginning to erupt? That would be awful. No, 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 no. Come on. Okay. Freezing it is. That's it, that's it, there we go. All right, how about, nice cannon blast. That seems smart, right? Right. What? No, 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 no. Distract it, please. I need a moment. It's looking at me. Please don't let it look at me. Okay. That... Those should not appear in the middle of battle. Oh yeah, it's down. Maybe I should be using the rattler right now. Oh well, I don't have it equipped. Let's not. Woo! This is not a good place to be. Another one? Oh, come on! No, please, no. I'm gonna knock this down for a moment if you don't mind. Come on, freeze it. There, you two attack. I'm gonna be on this side trying to... Oh, please don't stand near me. It's gonna try to kill us both. You don't say! I understand that attacking the tower would be strategically smarter. But I'm having a lot more fun trying to override them, so... Gonna keep on doing that. Actually, it's only doing minimal damage. Maybe I should try attacking the parts that don't have armor. Then again, I could attack the parts that have armor. Oh! Oh, that's a new move! That's a new move! Okay, that, that was uh, good evasive maneuvers on my part, I feel like. D Hi! Go away. Please don't do this to me anymore. Nope! Okay, I guess that somebody's trying to give it the electricity maneuver. Uh, I'm gonna have to override your choice here. Wait, did it give me an option to override this thing? I appreciate options, but I'm not going to override the final boss. Right, hard point it is. Nope, wait. Whoop. Hi. Nope. Oh, yeah, that is an excellent idea. I should do that more often. Probably won't get another chance to do it. I hope. Please. 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 Got it. What's this thing got? Cool. Hey, I can't get the fire claw heart. I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't care right now. Th those would only be good for selling. 
Okay. I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. I just realized I was holding down the override button that entire time. Oh, thank goodness. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the auxiliary data center. Aurea, I'm free. You must escape. Uh, uh, my sister. Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else matters? Artok. She wouldn't have wanted you to die here. Let's go. I'm down. Let's go. As far as I'm aware, nobody died at the end of the main game. And it had to happen at some point. Ross couldn't be the only one. So I was prepared for it. Isn't this fun? Okay, this would be a very bad time to have Butterfingers. Uh oh. Whoa! That was a good catch. Oh dang. Oh dang. Give me up top our attack. Now. I'd be content not playing this. I'm con I'm very content to just watch this all play out. I need explosive ammo. Above, quick. You've got some. Guess we're out. Oh, that's a long fall. And there's an avalanche. Great. Just what we always wanted. And somehow we're on top of the snow.
She has very green eyes, I've never noticed before. Cyan. She said she was transferring herself to the Auxiliary Center. I think she meant Araya's retreat at the end of the Shaman's Path. Then I will meet you there for the last verse of my sister's song. I'm so glad they didn't make me fast travel there. Or will they? Yeah. Yeah, they will. Where am I on the map, by the way? Oh. Yeah, we uh, we we came quite a ways. Oh, and all all the way inside, Cauldron Epsilon. Okay. Well. I'll probably put off the inevitable. Let's go. I felt a quick save was also necessary. Whew. Has there a talk ever been here? I think they said it was just a place for shamans to go. So... Maybe chieftains could come here too? No idea! Either way, we're gonna get into the story. This is definitely the last thing. Interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, Anne, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. 
So are you an artificial intelligence, Saya? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Well, I guess we know what won't be happening in the sequel. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. 
Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Vanuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear. A fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's... Poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. An AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. You meant a lot to Araya. Once I understood Araya's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Araya's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. 
By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes, it was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. <laughs> There's a ruin east of here full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. And Elizabeth Sobek. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you yes in many forms from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations to military grade conflict planners and there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization in order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits as a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point, a concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, 
catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. Okay, that's a new one for me. So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. Okay. That's... rough. I guess this is probably the better option. This could just lead to cultural shock and possibly destruction. I don't know how best her judgment could be. Maybe take it gently? I mean, taking it gently suggests that maybe introduce them to stuff over time. Either way, I guess using her judgment would be for the best. I hate to keep on choosing the thinking options, but they always feel better to me. I trust your judgment, Cyan. You were cautious with Araya. You had to be. You didn't know what had happened to the world. So, keep doing what you think is best. As long as you ditch the superstition eventually. As the Banuk believe I am a supernatural entity, I cannot predict how they will react. Just answer what they do ask the best you can. The truth will come out. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. See how he's doing. Cyan, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? Uh, I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen. We made you the way you are, to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up and protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Zhao, and I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. 
She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. Okay, uh, before we talk to our attack, I have a prediction that we may not see for a long time. It would be interesting if the search for Hephaestus, or even the search for all the other different AIs, was kind of spread out in the future. Um, future Horizon games are going to have their own main quest and whatnot, but I think it would be interesting to either continue the Hephaestus quest over a period of games, or maybe search for a couple of other AIs, just in the DLC. And then on the final game, whenever that happens to be, things in that nature wrap up in a DLC package, so it's more like, if you're interested in continuing this story, this is something you can pay for. I don't know if that would conflict a little bit with everybody's feelings, thinking, oh, now I have to go play the other games and buy the DLC for it, but I don't know. It just feels like something that they could possibly stretch out over a longer period of time. Sun's making a show of it. Okay, I guess that means we should stop talking now. <laughs> and start talking to our attack. My chieftain. Just... Aloy. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone. And the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now, I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratok. And where I'm going, Warak can't follow. Besides, I'd already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone. But there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now Tuke has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. It would seem your time among the Banuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades will confess us too, and unleash them on the world, as minds of their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life, aberrant life, transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there, and they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuka Conclave, too. You could stop right there. <laughs> Is that what you told the hunters the Banuka sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. 
My past and my secrets are my own. You'd do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. All right. See y'all next time on another episode of Horizon Zero Dawn. This was the end of the Frozen Wilds DLC as far as story goes, but from what I'm aware of, there's still one more thing we could do that we haven't done before. And one more thing that, personally, I'd like to wrap up as well. See you then, everyone. Take care.